Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is good. So, there are several things. They need to be expressed, they need to be integrated, felt, transmitted. Transmutation has been done. And transforming has catalyst. So the transmitting is happening. It's happening, people. This is... If you watch any of my videos, if not... Uh, this is... Troy Casey, Certified Health Nut. He is going through some ayahuasca ceremonies, but um, the, the, the center that he's in, uh, it seems like they have a whole bunch of different kinds of layers in integrative work that goes along with the medicine. Which is going to be, if you're interested in like uh, trying to find a place uh, to have ceremony with, with deeper level medicines, uh, plant spirit medicines like ayahuasca or iboga, uh, take time to do your research. Take time to uh, find testimonies of people who have been at certain places. But then also let go of all that because this is kind of like how life works. We have to uh, collect, recollect everything. And then it's just a process of recollecting, refining, transmuting, releasing, transmuting, flowing, letting go of all of, all of it and going back into the, back into the flow of all of it. So it's just a process here where we're just push and pull, you know. <laughs> wax on, wax off. Expand and contract. And let's be really like uh, f fine tune uh, what's happening. The more awareness we bring into the aspects that we, uh, that we're dark, as in we're in shade, we're. Shadowed and not yet integrated. The more that we integrate, the more we bring in, uh, bring the light of awareness into more aspects of, of beingness uh, within ourselves, and also how that is expressed, how we uh, witness what is happening inside of ourselves, and also all the other reflections, all the other people, the beings, the... Everything manifest is a reflection, and uh, it's telling you something. <laughs> it's speaking to you, and it's singing you a song. Go out in nature, and quiet your mind, and listen to the songs being played for you. The the wind and the leaves, the rustling of the fauna and flora, the life all around you that's creating a symphony for you. So yeah, uh... <laughs> Do your research, but then let go of it and go with what you feel you, you're being pulled to. Because oftentimes in life, you know, we uh, quote-unquote educate ourselves or basically re-educate ourselves. Uh, do our research, and then we're still left with a choice. We still feel this uh, feeling of which way I go, you know, at a crossroads. And uh, we can go with, you know... The study that we've done, the, the scientism or uh, the analytical aspects of what seems logical, what we've thought about and went through, or we can go with uh, 
not having any attachment, feeling the monad in, in the central point, and then basic, essentially having the pathway open up to us. But it's always a question upon if you can quiet your mind and still yourself, feel back into your heart and the flow, then the pathway opens up. We don't need to necessarily seek it or uh, it's not something sought after essentially once you are in this state where it, it, you allow it to open up to you. you. You have recognized through this refinement process what, what the connection uh, feels like, uh, what inspiration feels like, how to flow into that and swim within it. And oftentimes it's not going to seem logical at all. It's going to be going against the thing that you think is most logical and makes most sense. It's more economical or efficient. The intuition oftentimes is going to go with the thing for a lasting benefit. Yes, for what you need in the moment, but also for all movements. Uh, what's going to be the clearest connection for you with the gateway that's going to open up all the other gateways that you're going to find and come up, come along in this path of allowance and surrender. Seventy-seven volume. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to give a big shout out to Rizmia and what they've created here. Um, it's not just the ayahuasca. There's multiple levels of program that they have. And uh, hearing Jerry's story was uh, pretty powerful. His successes in business and life, and also his challenges, you know, what brought him to working with the medicine and now having a world class center where people from all over the world are coming in. There's about 70 to 90 people here every week. That's fucking insane. <laughs> I've never heard of a place that has uh, this level of medicine having that much. Uh, that many people, and then also hearing from someone who who I uh, I take their consideration and their input uh, highly. You know, I value it. So hearing this guy's testimony uh, that really to me speaks volumes about this place and the work that it's doing. And also, there's a lot of places that are similar to this, maybe not quite as good. Maybe there's, I mean, I'm sure there's probably some that's, you know, it's all, it's all individual though. I mean, I'm fine without like what, what Troy says, uh, all the creature comforts. Like I, I'm fine with just, uh, none of that. Just, just being naked out in, in, into the woods and staying that way. But everyone's like something is going to speak to you know to, <laughs> everything is going to speak in different ways to different people uh, different perspectives. Um, we all have our own like inner guidance system. It's just, it's just that most people aren't um, attuned with that. We have been ingrained and indoctrinated to go against that. So this is kind of what I mean when I say there's no right or wrong it's all what one individual needs in the moment and they're attuning with that and that may seem wrong to someone else that is attuned with you know what they need in the moment but the first person is going to experience something completely different than the person on the outside looking in so, 
how do we get on the inside? How do we tune in? How do we check in? What's going on within the body and the mind and the interconnected uh, reality? Seventh verse ceremony tonight. Uh, but before that, you know, the food is amazing. So it's farm to table, all organic, non GMO. Um, it's set up for the, the, the ayahuasca diet, basically. Everything's. And I would be interested what uh, what that means, the ayahuasca diet, as in like uh, what what foods he is eating, because. I'll go into it later, his previous video. I almost made a video of that one. I'm glad I waited. But uh, with ayahuasca or uh, any kind of uh, plant spirit medicines, really whatever it is, um, you, don't need, you don't need anything, people. These things uh, help you um, recover and recollect what's going on inside of you that you, for whatever reason in life, um, whatever kind of maybe traumas or whatever has happened that you or even going through an indoctrination system where you are taught to ignore your intuition and what's going on within and have always have your awareness drawn without to study something outside of you that does not really mean anything it doesn't have a clear interconnectedness with what with what's going on inside of you this is uh the purpose of the indoctrination system have you ignore what's going on inside of you have you rely upon something that's outside of you and when everyone else is doing it well this is the entrainment that happens origins of the food and stuff like that so for me it, I travel a lot and that's one of the you know, biggest issues that I have to deal with um, is you know hunting down good food and so it's just amazing being here I don't have to think about that and the coconut wire is on tap too <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and I highly recommend getting on high quality coconut water and drinking uh, as much as your body tells you it needs. And at first, your body may kind of not want it at all. But uh, the more cleansing work you do, the more your body is going to be able to absorb like good quality shit. And so the more you're going to be attracted towards good quality shit, your body... Especially, this comes back into feeling our intuition, feeling what our body is telling us it needs in the moment. And a lot of times, whenever we do deep level cleansing and fasting, our body is going to tell us we don't, we're good, dude. Like, we got this, this, uh, this system <laughs> that's going on here. Like, it's good. It doesn't need anything else. But then, you know, where most people get caught up is the. Well, first and foremost, not listening to their body and to their intuitions. I'm not really even understanding what intuition really means or engaging that at all. But then most people have uh, are compulsive. Most people have addictions. And all these are darkened. They don't realize that they have them for, for most people. If you realize you have an addiction, then uh, blessed be to you because now that you have shed light upon it you have a choice now do you continue with the addiction do you change course do you do something different do you zig and zag into a new reality a clarity of why it's a transmutation we go through things and then we have the option of continuing down a path that 
is either going to lead to dead ends, as in it just goes back towards uh, it's a, it's a downward spiral. Like, where's my finger? It's not necessarily a dead end because uh, energy always flows, so it's always going to veer off one way or another. It's a dead end is in that it circles back around in on itself, and then you go back down into the uh, pathways and behaviors until you learn how to come up out of them, and that's that's the six and the nine people. We six and cycle back down, <laughs> you know, it's the flowering, you know, then with the nine, the bud is above and then it's stemming out and the nine, it starts up here and it's buried underneath. So the 69 is the, the seed planting and this is a uh, part of the process of having fertile soil within fertile grounds uh, gardening the uh, the mind and the body constantly and the seeds uh, higher higher and higher quality of seeds are going to be planted within you and are going are going to be able to come to fruition whenever we do this cleansing work this deep level of understanding and, and coming into a gnosis of what reality is, how to experience, how to feel back into it. Surrender and allow, yes, but in how to engage this. So this is the, you know, the push and the pull. We have to engage, push into the pull, into the stillness. And find the central point that unites both of, both of those things. Becoming a third thing from the product of these two things. Still retaining the uh, attributes of those two things. The push and the pull, the male and the female. A third triune. A third cr creation. <laughs> So, uh, another dimension that I really liked was, you know, they brought in Reverend Michael's uh, Agape International Spiritual Center Technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a class today, it was all about setting intentions and getting really clear on that. Yes. And yesterday I had a breakthrough with the breath work. And okay, yes. And now I will talk about uh, his previous video with... And I'll share the link to this one here, so you can you can go and look at the previous one if you so choose. But he had uh, basically a breakthrough with his just just breath work, no medicine, as in uh, ayahuasca. And uh, if you've seen any of the videos that I've shared or any of the videos of this guy, like he has pretty intensive breath work, like he gets into it, his whole body. And so, uh, from, from what he said, like, it, him going super into it, it's going to freak people out. They're not going to really, uh, understand what he's going through. And so, the people there, uh, kind of suggested for him to lay down. <laughs> and he's like, you, no, I'm not going to stop this. Why would you want to stop this? Like, he was in full lotus and just fully in, which... I've experienced as well. Before I was even into breath work, I, I experienced this spontaneously through uh, uh, Terence McKenna's suggested heroic dose of uh, the menstrual fungi. And I did this, and I was not into uh, pranayama at this point, and I did this to the point where... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I should go into that, but... My limbs were just so like coiled up and uh, accessing the center core so much that um, all of my pores opened up. I, I could breathe through every every little aspect of my being. And after I went through this intensive breath work, that just happened. I just did it. I I don't know. I think 
I kind of started to engage it because that's the only thing that I could really, my ego could really, uh, not necessarily attached to, but I realized that, like, there's so much going on right now, like, the only thing that I really am right now is my breath, so I just breathe in and out as much as I could for quite a while, and I remember afterwards, I, I just, I didn't need to breathe, um, really, at all, for a good 15 minutes, and then, you know, um, having these, um, intense experiences. This has been my life experience as well as I will have intense uh, experiences and then like find things. Like, as within, so without. We find the without that helps us understand what we went through. So I found uh, deeper levels of Terrence McKenna, Ram Dass, uh, Eventually leading into Wim Hof. But yeah, uh, the beauty is that we, we realize that it's all within. So this breath work, we can access, access these states and uh, essentially focus down our, our <laughs> focus in upon the stillness and then the connection becomes clearer and the inspiration we can feel it and uh, the imagery becomes very potent because of what we're engaging in this kind of a uh, direct space of beingness and, uh, and I was just, I told myself a different story, I said, using grace, and uh, I was able to cycle through it hmm. a lot quicker, not, not saying that I don't have other layers that may surface later, but... Uh, exactly, and that's, that's what will happen, even though we blast through, um, with, with just any kind of a intense experience in life, we... We kind of blast through to a new level of awareness. It doesn't necessarily mean, just because we've tasted, you know, a certain height, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can exist there, or even necessarily that we would want to in the first place. It just means that that is there. So this process happens of integration, of where we were to what we experienced. And it's not necessarily the goal to get back to that place. It's... Or even, um, if we can, there's necessarily... <laughs> it's not about, like, uh, existing in, in the higher realms uh, constantly. It's about uh, transmuting all of them, like, alchemizing them, being a hue man and woe man. And having access to all of it. Because that that's where... <laughs> you're going to actually have inspiration because there's plenty of beings out there and even like humans now the modern day human nowadays doesn't really have access to inspiration all that much uh, in any kind of clarity or purity at least so like the people that I'm connecting with nowadays uh, they are just like basically allowing my uh, beingness to absorb are, are people that engage uh, different aspects and avenues of life um, in a intense manner, but with clarity. So I feel like I'm able to learn a lot from uh, watching or listening or uh, feeling these people because of their honesty and what they experience. They're not having any kind of mask on or trying to uh, be a part or, or play a part. They're being uh, genuine. And that's not to say that people aren't genuine whenever they get uh, triggered or offended or whatever. It's just it's a genuine ignorance. So, I mean, yes, like ignoring 
things. It's a genuine uh, aspect and thing that people engage, but it's genuinely <laughs> stupid. <laughs> And a lot of times with, with ignorance, it's, it's because we, we are led to believe something that we have, we, we have heard other people say, or it seems as if, you know, it could be this way because of uh, what we've been told, especially with the indoctrination systems. They, they want to pull your, call your awareness into a box and into a state that seems like it's a dead end or just a mystery eventually. Uh, we have the answers, but then it could be this, it could be that. Who's to know until you let go and go with the flow, bro? For sure. Yesterday's, you know, it was just amazing to reset my attention. So in the class today, you know, it was just another reminder, you know, just be conscious and aware of everything that you're doing exactly. at the moment and setting your attention. She talked about this is uh, of uh, of most importance, but also, you know, like I've been saying, like going with the flow, like being so clear with your intention that you allow, uh, you just. Uh, start to swim back into the flow of life and that that's that's what living really is and that's why people are really afraid of living and not dying is because uh, they have to go into the flow and let go and people don't want to fucking let go they want to hold on to the banks and that's not a uh accident there you know the banks of the river of the current the currency and we hold on to the banks because they are holding on to us because of the system set up. That that ultimately you agree upon, but I mean it's the generational thing. The parents agree upon it, the children uh, don't know what they have had their parents agree upon. So they don't they the the children don't already the the children have no idea that they are already a slave. Already. And uh, if if we get into this uh, far enough where, where he talks about uh, the children, uh, that's what I wanted to say also. It's like I'm going to share some things about child education and... Uh, non-indoctrination, re-remembrances of uh, what children, who children are, because uh, that's something that, you know, most people, they never have that question at all, or a lot of these things, they never have uh, happen upon their minds, is that, who are children? Are they just you know, the product of uh, the two people? Are they just a, uh, a minor um, being who is learning and growing and is that it or can we learn even more from these beings and the process they're going through are they closer to source because of their uh, the, the purity and in, in their mentality and their engagement it's call it like non-corruption, but it's also non-indoctrination yet. So the pathway is still clear there. And then they are entrained and indoctrinated into closing off pathways and creating loops and eddies and whirlpools that uh, become stagnations. This kind of work, breath work, fasting, this uh, plant spirit medicine work, they help us to remember these whirlpools that we agreed upon and we created within ourselves. 
And this is also uh, the beauty of yoga and sending awareness and intention, attention, intention and attention to uh, the stagnation inside the body. So that we become, we become more flexible within and without. Whenever you access deeper levels of Yes, yoga, but like in the asanas and the stretches, uh, you get into some very deep places where you you start to tap into the focus and, and the focal point that has to happen so that you can engage deeper level stretches. And then you realize that this kind of focus translates into all aspects of life. Got it. I got it. So yes, as within, so without. Re reigniting the focus and the intention. Feeling it deeply, engaging it. And then also allowing the flow to happen. With this intense connection, we don't release the connection necessarily. We gain a new uh, appreciation <laughs> and engagement <laughs> with this connection. We always we always have it, and it's not necessarily a holding on to. We don't necessarily want to hold on to anything. It's that we have become we have become it. So it's always there. We always have access to it. We just have to remember these access points and these pathways, the gateways. We have to uh, remember where the keys are to open the gates. It's a new kid. It's something we've been into Detroit and Athena's life as well, you know, daily. You know, what's your intention for today? And so, uh, so I really like that technology and, you know, the Agape practitioners, they always speak everything into the affirmative, which I love. You know, mm. words, I think, mm -hmm. using the laws of alchemy, thought, word, action, manifests in the flesh. And so, uh, yeah, intentions are really, you know, a foundational. So she taught willingness yeah. and then surrender and trust. So the willingness to open up to whatever your intention is. You know, if you want to go deeper on your own healing or just want to call forth the solution, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And the, uh, the trust is also, you know, just as much of an aspect of the willingness. You have to trust into the willingness and then surrender into the flow. Like, it's all a triune here, people. <laughs> You're starting to see um, beyond polarity and duality into a triunity, the tri-ball, not the bi-ball. That that is fucking beautiful. Cause I hear I hear fucks out here saying word is bond. And time and time again from these fucks, their word is uh it's also a joke, it's also sarcastic, it's also not to be taken seriously. It's also them just, you know, oh playing a part or or just joking around and uh to be thrown away to the side. Just fucking around. So, uh, whenever people like that say word is bond, they, uh, you should never bond yourself to anything, ultimately, because the bonding happens in the communion between, uh, with, with love. The bonding happens with love and it happens uh, in, in the, the moment of uh, unity with 
<laughs> coming in sync and in connection, attuned with the thing that you are in love with. But this kind of bond is not uh, binding. Not a binding bond. So essentially, uh, word is one. Word is your spell. Every time we speak, it's it's a spell. But we did not learn <laughs> the spells we are casting with the spellings we have been taught. So yes, word is wand. It is so much more powerful than saying word is bond. But it's not even a saying thing. It's just a knowing thing. You don't need to necessarily speak things into existence whenever you just see them, feel them. And you can move your way into them or also navigate your way through certain avenues that you may find yourself within. So, uh, again, Terra Nova was the one who taught the class. Um, and uh, the day before, I, I, Reverend Michael did uh, you know, his Sunday service, and we watched it here on TV as well. It's just good having the energy of Reverend Michael here, because he's such a powerful dude, <laughs> awesome human being, speaks to the mind channels the mind <clears throat> it's magical and you guys can watch that anytime on uh, Agape International Spiritual Center and they do live streaming of the Sunday service and so uh, yeah and uh, Kim Terranova she would be a Agape practitioner and she'll be teaching again on Wednesday uh, but her class was, was great today and, uh, and then we drank medicine tonight we started at about 5.30 Really good shamans. There's this one young guy. There. And of course, because this guy is a fucking uh, shaman, uh, in, instead of, you know, like recollecting the experience and be like, oh, really strong medicine, really good medicine. It's the, uh, it's the shamans and the people, uh, surrounding him that he brings recognition to because really like I we, we are all shamans we we are we are all, we are, we, are <laughs> bleh, we are all I'm losing my voice we are all everything so uh alchemist transmutation Transmutationalists, I think that's a new word. Uh, becoming shamans of our own reality. Medicine men, medicine women, that is everyone it is their own, essentially. God and goddess and their own muse, their own inspiration. But there is a vast universe out there as there is in here and there. And there is there is much remembrance to be had for a lot of a lot of reasons. And a lot of it has to do with uh, the traumas in our DNA that even even when we healed on deep levels our body still holds on to things that we necessarily uh, may or may not have touch upon on some level but really to integrate these things to understand uh, how how and why the body does what it does how it's connected with everything outside of us, what it yearns for, uh, the connection that it yearns for with 
with the Earth Mama and the all that is and the unity, how, how it seeks Eden and the connection of the things that we grow and plant in our own little uh, sacred space of love are plants that essentially are eternal because of how plants operate. They flower forth. They, they root, grow, and flower forth. And then the seeds fall again to the ground and it repeats. So nature is eternal, people. If you did not already recognize or notice, it's a refinement process happening and an awaiting for an enga engagement with uh, with people and nature and what is real again. How to feel again. It was so like clear and then he would do this and he'd say something and he'd go, mm -hmm. <laughs> So he was like affirming everything that uh, uh, he was saying. It was, it was really cool and mm -hmm. powerful and sweet, very kind and gentle. People that work with medicine. Yes, and, and that's uh, what it will remind you of if you are not that beforehand. Because a lot of times we are, we have been brought up in this fucking shit show, rat race, uh, circus, psycho, merry-go-round. And because of the power of the mind, we don't necessarily realize that there's other things out there and in here than what we've been led to believe. Once again, you know, that's because this guy researched something and saw kind of uh, maybe something that he might like or something that looked good and then he went with his mind and if he would have uh, allowed a process to happen with his heart, it probably would have drawn him to towards something that didn't look as, uh, oh, glamorous as what he, that person I found with the Yaboga uh, website. But it would have been something towards what he felt he needed. That was more uh, down to roots and then the foundational work. So Jerry is like, you know, was clean, the ceremony was clean, they had, so we had about 70 people in the room, and they had maybe about 10 or 15 facilitators. Um, That's quite a few. At least, you know, two head shamans were there, and uh, so we had our first cup, and then about an hour and a half later, uh, they offered a second cup, and then I went back for a third, and so like that that's an amazing um thing um, i'm just i'm just uh, reminiscing here and recollecting <laughs> but uh yeah i would pretty much have to have uh 
this kind of a ceremony happen pretty much just with me and the medicine because of uh, deeper things that both of us need to uh, integrate and recollect and engage but I would not be opposed to having uh, a shaman in the presence who has been through Basically, just someone who knows that they're holding space. That's what I wanted to mention earlier. Like, uh, part of being a shaman, you're just kind of holding space. You don't necessarily need to make ikarus or songs or even emanations necessarily. You just uh, to be a high level shaman, all you need to do is just hold space and and feel the connection that's happening. Allow the person to have the experience. And if need be, to guide them back into the connection of the direct experience that they are having. Not to control uh, the avenues or pathways that they are having. Or necessarily even offer uh, engagements. But that can be a part of it if you lead someone back into uh, awareness. Because a lot of times people have uh, intense um, reactions to uh, intense engagements. And they begin to freak out. And so it's uh, beneficial on, on these with these uh, plant spirit medicines to have someone that can potentially help guide you back into a place... Or you can just flow again. Cause uh, you're you're really diving like deep into the psyche, deep into like the inner levels. So if you quote unquote have a bad trip, um, that can potentially. Um, but you have to keep engaging it though, because people who have who have bad trips have have bad uh, patterns and behaviors, and they're they are used to continuing this engagement and not just finally letting it the fuck go. So the shamans really just hold space and allow people to remember to let shit the fuck go. <laughs> so, uh... But, I mean, also you can get into deeper, deeper level shamanism where, you know, intent is, is agreed upon and had where uh, you have, like, uh, soul recollection and, and bringing back of, of a guiding of the awareness, essentially, back into aspects of the beingness. So that's, that's the deeper level shamanism stuff that really should only be had in, like, one-on-one -on -one experience be honest so this stuff but having these kind of ceremonies are just like, kind of like the uh, initial uh, healings and uh, thresholds it was good for me because uh, the purge and purging Gunk, man, emotional stuff in your bile ducts and just like, <laughs> and I don't always puke, and sometimes you just want to puke. Mm -hmm. and you don't. Uh, nothing's worse than that because then you just get a. I've had plenty of ceremonies in the past where, you know, I wanted to puke and I didn't puke and I had to let go of mm. the idea of wanting to puke. Yes. And that's really weird. Like, it brings back my memories of, uh, mm. Some of the first times that I ever, like, v kind of vomited, or, or I wouldn't say violently vomited, but just it was more forceful uh, because of fever or whatever is going on inside of me. Basically being fed bullshit processed foods, essentially, and also not being loved. That, that will just destroy the soul and spirit if, if, if you allow it, if we allow it. But, uh... 
some of my first memories of purging, like I always have a, I always had a positive um, experience with it. Not necessarily that I enjoy it in the moment, but like immediately afterwards, you feel like you let go, you had that release, and then you feel so much better. But you know, if you ever, if you've ever been through like a deep fever or being sick whenever you were young, a lot of times you have to purge continuously. A lot of times, like with this stuff, these deep plant spirit engagements, you have to purge continuously. Letting things out that you have forgot that was within because of the ignorance, ignoring the things that you're putting inside of yourself. Not just with food, not just with water, with emotion, intention. Um, attention, your awareness, your mentality, the things that you allowed inside of yourself through your mind as well. Uh, so arduous, but uh, I moved my intestines um, mm -hmm. a couple of times, quite, quite a few times actually, and then I had a real riot, lion, roaring, uh, gallbladder flush. Just came right out. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, because <laughs> the snakes and insects uh, have their part to play as well. And Jerry offers, he's got some kind of, uh, he's got some kind of uh, scholarship program and recommend three to go for free. So three people that you recommend. That's pretty Sign cool. Up, and you can have your trip for free. So, it's it's really nice interesting. How, uh, how all this is manifesting and happening very rapidly and uh, in tune and in time, ready to emit a uh, reverberation. This kind of level of healing and how to uh, find your way into it, how to remember <laughs> what you need to feel the uh, holistic aspect of beingness. Oh yes, I I almost ended this, but I remembered this. I did. 
I uh I pulled a card here. Actually, I pulled two because the first one, the first one fl flung out, and um, I seen how how a lot of people, how a lot of people who do who pull cards are or, or <laughs> oracle cards. They wait till the cards fling out, and uh, I've always done like a method of uh, basically three, three, and three, and. It always works for me and everyone involved. But uh, this card flung out, and I was like, uh, it was whenever I was shuffling, and I've never had a card just like fly out like that. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's gonna stay out while I go ahead and do my three, three, and three. So I'm gonna share that card now. So yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> so let's uh, let's read from this little booklet. Phoenix, rebirth, resurrection, immortality, hope. The Phoenix card is a reminder never to lose hope. What appears to be gone will return again if we are patient. The phoenix is a universal symbol for resurrection and immortality. The legend of a great bird that dies and is reborn from fire has roots in many cultures. Perhaps the oldest of these is the Feng Huang, a Chinese phoenix that has figured in folklore for over 7,000 years as the embodiment of harmony and grace. Another ancient myth tells of the Binyu, an, an Egyptian sunbird associated with the sun god Ra and Osiris, the resurrected god of the afterlife. The Greeks incorporated elements of the Binyu story into their own myth of the phoenix. They believed that every 500 years the phoenix would build a nest that would be set aflame by the sun. As it settled upon this pyre, it sang a sweet song that drew all the birds of the world to witness its immolation. However, though the flames consumed the bird, the phoenix was not destroyed. Instead, it was born, reborn from the flames to live anew. And that's just something that, uh, is happening here. This the rebirth in Phoenix energy. So here's the uh, the card that I pulled. They didn't flop out. Which is just perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Having a lot of peacock energies lately. A lot of uh, peacock remembrances. So I'll read from that, from the book. Peacock, pride, being dazzled by appearances, beauty. The peacock card represents the double-edged sword of beauty. 
Just as the peacock seeks to lure a potential mate through the display of its glorious plumage, superficial appar appearances can dazzle to what lies beneath the surface. In late 19th century England, the peacock was associated with the aesthetic art movement. Its followers considered the pursuit of beauty one of the greatest known to humanity, often valuing form over function. More positively, the peacock is associated, associated in ancient times. Oh, light with Roman sovereign goddess Ju Juno. <laughs> it was believed that the many eyes contained within its feathers represented goddesses' eyes as she watched over her worshippers, which I, which I just read for, for Juni as well. Yep. So there you go. The Phoenix and, and the fucking... Peacock. Which for me is Hawaii vibes. Which for me is native vibes. And this all around. Fucking Shaka. Good shit. Peace.